the book of the prophet called Haggai, chapter 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month came the word of Yahuwah by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shantarel, governor of Judah, and to El Joshua, the son of Yahuwah, the high priest, saying, Thus speak Yahuwah, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that Yahuwah's house should be built. Then came the word of Yahuwah by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it the time for you, O you that dwell in your chiseled houses, and this house lies a waste? Verse 5. Now therefore, thus says Yahuwah, Consider your ways, Israel. You have sown much, but you bring in little. You eat, but have you not enough? You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You are clothed, but there is none that is warm. And he that earns wages amongst you, they put it in a bag with holes. Thus says Yahuwah, Consider your ways, Joshua. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, says Yahuwah. You look for much and lo, it came to little. You worked hard, don't have much to show for it. When you brought it home, I did blow up on it. Why? Says Yahuwah. Because of my house that is a waste. You run every man into his own house or his own way. In essence, he's saying Israel puts him second. Therefore, the heavens over you are stayed from dew. In essence, you're not being blessed. And the earth is stayed from you, her fruit. Again, therefore, you're not going to be blessed. Verse 11, and I call for a drought upon the land. Now you're going to reap the consequences of putting me second. And upon the mountains. In other words, wherever you go, you'll see the strength of me and my hand upon you. Not to lift you up, but to hold you down. Because you put yourself and others before me. And upon the grain. And upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground brings forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of your hands. Shalom, Yashrael, Elder DFG. That was a reading from the book of Haggai. And I thought it would be appropriate to lead this particular uh, teaching teach, inform, educate, this particular uh, teaching off here. I'll give you a little backstory how I got here. Last night, uh, we had our uh, Tanakh Wednesday night study, and we started off here prior to going before Yahuwah, you know, in, in prayer. And as we went through this, it became very apparent that Yahuwah was signaling us that is anger, anger, his fury with us had nothing to do necessarily with the curses in terms of a being away. In other words, he's that I'm just going to curse y'all because y'all a bunch of rebellious people and I'm cursing you and that's it and nothing can be done about it. No. What Yahuwah brought to our attention, and we went over to the book of Leviticus to, to validate it, and then we had precepts, and if you're with us, then you, and I have your email, you would have gotten that information, and this is not to solicit your email, this is to teach, educate, and form. If it's important to you, then you do what you have to do to get what you need. And I say that as a caveat, 
because so many times, you know, Israel has so got, gotten, we as a people have gotten so caught up in self-hatred one towards another that whatever Yab says to us, when it comes through the mouth of one of his true watchmen, we, the first thing we do, we get suspicious. We don't suspect, we, ne we never get suspicious when the heathens come. The non melon so-called white man come. You know, that's the old saying, white ice got to be colder than black ice. So if a white guy says it, it's true. But when Israel says the first thing, you know, our antennas go up. <laughs> They're not really antennas. It's just a form of self-hatred. And what we do is we gloss it, we, we gloss it over with, well, somebody did me something wrong in the past. Well, the heathen have been doing you something wrong since they brought your ancestors over hundreds of years ago, but you still seem to trust what they have to say. This is what Yahuwah is saying to us in Haggai. We're going to go beyond this, by the way. But we talked about it last night. And we talked about even though we're in captivity, and we are, that was a part of a now that was a holistic judgment. That wherever we would be, we would be in the, in the land of our enemies. That won't be reversed until Yah comes back. So let's be clear with that. But inside of that captivity, our behavior has a lot to do with whether we're blessed or not. And in particular, our behavior before Yahuwah. Are we putting ourselves first? And then, you know, justifying it or glossing it over. And when things don't work out for me, let me stay in order here. So are we putting ourselves first? And when things don't work out for us, we gloss it over by saying, oh, we're under the curses. That's why. That's why we need Jesus, because we're under the curses. Yahweh Shah, because we're under the curses. Somebody better die for the curse and, and, and sins that I'm, that I'm willingly doing. And Yah said, no, not so. That's what he's saying here in Haggai chapter 1. We talked about it again last. He said, no, that's not so. So this all has to do with you putting yourself, your chisel houses, before my house. You know, when Solomon, you know, told us, trust in Yahuwah with all our heart and lean not to our own understandings and all of uh our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths and then our barns will be full and our increase would, would be full. Let's, let's look at that real quick. I'm going to come back there and then we're going somewhere else. But I think this is important because a lot of us are in a situation where we're walking around with wowsy, wowsy, woo, woo, slat rock from Pebbles and Bam Ham, Flintstone, <laughs> childhood, if you're my age group, commercial. Everything is whoa, whoa. Everything is old me. Everything, oh, sorry, oh, so sorry. Doom, despair. Y'all heard me say, doom, despair, and agony on me. If it, you know, deep, dark depression, express, expressive, expressive misery. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Doom, despair, and agony on me. That's most of Israel. Why? Because we allow the heathens and the heathens' agents to come and tell us that there's some curse on us that is absolutely nothing we can do about it. And because we're so unfocused on what we should be focused on ourselves, still as Yahuwah, now it's marinating in our minds and we're not even hearing that other you know, quiet voice, that soft whisper that says to us, you know, I love you no matter what, right? You know, you were my firstborn yet, right, Joshua? You know that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, right, Joshua? You know, you're marvelous to behold. The whole world is amazed or, 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 or how you say, Almost, wow, what's the word? It's a, it's a word that's right here on the tip of my tongue. Enormoured, en en enormoured, enormoured. 
And of course, you're going to have the wicked little, you know, yo, we, we don't care nothing about y'all. They're lying their asses off. Anything we get involved in, and we start the show, I'll get whether it be Simone Biles and gymnastics, or whether you be Tiger Wood and golf, or the Williams sisters in tennis, or, or Jordan, or LeBron in basketball, or, you know, Pele, or Ronaldo in soccer. It doesn't matter. We show up. And they show up right behind us. So they know there's something special about us. Not only in our natural physicality, but in our ability to perform. Even out in their cotton fields. Feeding their little heathen babies with the, our mother's breast milk. Cleaning their houses, cooking their food, building their houses, building their white houses. So they know, but in order to keep us under the curses, they have to tell us y'all curse and they have to send their agents and tell, no, look at Deuteronomy 28. You curse, brother. You curse, brother. Yeah, that's not what y'all is saying. And Yah is not the author of confusion. Yahuwah is not the author of confusion. And Isaiah warned the people in 1 Kings chapter 18. He said, how long will y'all be between two opinions? Either you're going to listen to these men or you're going to listen to me, Yahuwah. Men telling you you curse. Yah only said we were under captivity. But he said inside that captivity, if we obey him, look at this. Proverbs, let's go with Proverbs real fast. Now, Tell me how this sounds to you, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Tell me how this sounds to you. Teach, inform, educate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get your head. You know, y'all know the drill. <laughs> Ham and saw, right? Ham and saw. The elder don't change. One thing about me, I'm very consistent, very persistent, and that's why Yah has shown me a better way more times than I could ever be thankful or graceful to him for doing. Because he knew I won't quit. Hallelujah. But look what it says here. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3. My son, my son, forget not my Torah. Now, how many times we've seen people read Proverbs uh, in, in, you know, talking about the blessings of Yah make a man rich and had no sorrow with it. <laughs> uh, we read them talking about the virtuous woman. She gets up early, stays up late. But yet, right here, in the very beginning, time after time, although they're telling us the Torah is done away with, it reads this. My son, forget not my Torah, but let your heart guard my commandments. See, this is what Amos is saying over there. I mean, hey, guys, saying, y'all not letting your heart, y'all not letting Yah's heart lead you. You're letting your heart lead yourself. You guys are not seeking Yahuwah. You're seeking yourself, and you're trying to pimp Yahuwah out. But if you do this for me, Yahuwah, then I'll, then I'll, I'll do that for you. But Yah said it doesn't work that way. Because I don't play second fiddle to nobody. I'm nobody's mistress. That's why he called us adulterers. The you adulterous, wicked generation you all, Yashorel. Not all of us, but holistically. More of us that way than are not, is what he's really saying. So it appears to the unlearned that he's talking about everybody with the curses. No, he's not. Because look at this. He says, for length of days and long life and peace shall add unto you. And let not mercy and truth forsake you. For those who say, well, how am I supposed to, I don't even know how to obey the Torah. Well, can you do mercy? Can you be kind? Can you be generous to your brother, like-minded brothers and sisters? Not the ones who are in rebellion, those who are walking in agreement with Yahuwah, with you, as you should be doing. Can you be kind to them? Can you be honest with them? Can you, can you embrace them without your bias, without your prejudice, without your hurt because someone else did something and somehow or another it's everybody's fault? But when they ask you who is everybody other than your mama, your cousin, your dad, and your brother, and some man that that you know reject you or some woman who you know 
rejected you, you, you seem to get stuck right there. And we hardly ever hear you say, well, you know, I was serving Yah and keeping this law, statutes, and commandments and doing the things that I was supposed to do and all these negative things happened to me. But oops, right? Oops, oops. You weren't doing that because you were told they were not necessary. Correct? So when Yah talks about in Amos, you know, why didn't you build my house before yours? And now my house is sitting here wasted while your house is looking nice. What he's simply saying is why you focused on you are the heathens, but you forgot about me, who is the creator of all things, including you. Because look what Solomon comes over to back this up. Look what he says here, brothers and sisters. To let mercy and truth not forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. Now, if you go over to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and you start reading at verse 5 through uh, verse, what, 11, 12, you're going to say the same thing about his Torah. Says the exact same thing on what we're supposed to do with Yah's Torah. Watch this. Hallelujah. We're going to go through this thing. Slowly, but effectively. Look what it says here. The book of Deuteronomy, our Torah, same Torah that Solomon was talking about a moment ago, that the heathens won't tell us is done away with, which is a flat out lie. I'll show you that in a moment. But look what it reads. Here, De Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Yasharel, or Israel, us, Yahuwah is one, alone. And you shall love Yahuwah with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and all of your mouth. might. That's not what they were doing over in the book of Haggai. That's not what Haggai is saying. No, they were doing themselves first and saying, well, when we get ours, then we'll come and give you yours, Yah. And Yah said, oh, no, you're not. You're going to put me first or I'm going to put you last. I'm going to let your enemy, you're going to be the tail instead of the head. You try that with me. And since I'm the boss and you're not, test me and see. So we decided to test him and look at the situation that we're in, even to this very day, for challenging Yah by learning the ways of the heathens and, 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 and listening and a, and, a, and, a, and abridging ourselves with them Aligning ourselves with them at the detriment of one another. White ice is colder than black ice. White man said it's got to be true. But let them melanate it. Silver hair one say something and then all of a sudden your, your suspicions, your stench starts to come out of you. Your rebellion. It's exactly why Moses had so much trouble with the people when they came out of it out of Israel because they just couldn't see this black man and this Israelite man giving them but when Pharaoh was over there slinging at them they were, they were ducking and running and, and responding but Yah delivered them from bondage and brought them to the truth to a leader that Yah selected for them and they didn't want to have nothing to do with it because what that came was an obligation and they did not want as they are today want to be held accountable and ob obligated to anything Unless they going to see themselves winning in it. That's why he said over there again in Amos, you got your chisel houses, but my house lies waste. But look at this, verse 6, Deuteronomy 6 and 6. And all these words which I command you this day, you shall, shall be in your heart. And you shall teach your children diligent. You shall teach them diligent in, unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lay down and when you rise up and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as eyeglasses or frontless between your eyes and you shall write them upon the post of your house and upon your gate and it shall be when Yahuwah have brought you into the land that he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you a great and goodly cities to give you great and good, goodly cities which you didn't have to build. And houses full of all the good things which you did not have to fill. And wells dug which you did not have to dig. And vineyards and olive trees which you didn't have to plant. And when you shall have eaten and you shall be full. And it goes on and on. But why? Because we put Yahuwah first. 
We focused on his house and not ourselves. We focused on him. We didn't focus on the gods of this world. We didn't allow their religious clergy to come and tell us Yah had done away with his word. But again, look what he says, verse 6, Deuteronomy 6 and 6. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them to, unto your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. You should be doing it. And when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, you should be meditating on his word day and night. Just like, he, like David said in Psalm chapter 1, meditating on his Torah day and night. He said, and if you do that, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaf will never wither and everything you do would prosper. But many who are suffering in, and out in Yahshua, they're not doing, they're not meditating on Yah's word day and night. They're over there praying to some heathen God, whichever one they want to call him. Why? Because the heathens say so. Not because the book is saying so. Oh yeah, they gave the, the, the New Testament lying book over there, the book of sorcery, spell casting, the narrow man's book praying the dead, to the dead. Saying that Lucifer or Yahweh, same person, is, is their savior and redeemer, and he isn't. Because if he was, they would have long ago been saved and redeemed. But we as a people, as hard as we believe on that, on that, we're taught to believe on that. You're talking about putting money in bags with holes in it. You tell me how that is not what, you know, an example of, you know, what Amos Haggai is talking about. You're doing all this stuff and you got nothing to show for it. And we all did it in the name of Jesus, or Yahusha, or Yahushua. The black one, the yellow one, doesn't matter, the white one. And here it is now in these last days, Yah's using your watchman, your brother, your his messenger. There are others. But he's using me to come to y'all people, our people, and ask them to, to consider their ways. That's what Leviticus talked about, the book of chapter 26. Again, we studied it last night. Consider your ways, consider your ways. You're making me angry. You, the anger that not you, the anger that is befalling you, or the fear that's befalling you, the desolation that is befalling you, has nothing to do with curses as much as it has to do with your behavior. But it says here clearly, we should walk by that. We should teach it. We should meditate upon the word day and night. Now let's go back over here to Proverbs chapter three. Again, what does it says here? Okay, book of Proverbs chapter three. Verse 3, let mercy and truth forsake, for not, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them upon your necks and write them on the tablets of your heart. Put it on your doorpost, on your gates. Right? We just read that, Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, 5 through 7. And so you show, and if you do this, look what it's saying here, brothers and sisters. It says, if you do this, you shall find favor and your understanding will increase in the sight of Yahuwah and in the sight of men. See, Yahuwah is solution-oriented. That's why he gave us this Torah. But see, the heathen told you to dismiss it. It's done away with. Because they don't want you to understand the answer to your problem. They just want you to embrace your problem. Embrace these curses. Suffer peacefully. You'll get your day in court at judgment. You will. But the words you're going to hear is going to be guilty because you are an idolater. The words you're going to hear is going to say, depart from me, you who are shameful, and you, I find you in contempt of court. Because I clearly had written out for you a Torah or a book with instruction for you Yasharel. And you chose to neglect it for the heathen's New Testament twisted book, the book that they teach from. And then when others told you, no, that's not your book, you say, oh, yes, it is my book. 
the white ice is colder than black ice. And if the white people believe in, you know, in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I'm going to believe in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If the heathen nations, talking about the melanated heathen nation, if they believe in it, I'm going to believe in it too. In Islam too. The Quran. <laughs> the Mord. Everything. But what is written for you? How sad. How sad. And that's why, again, why hey guy said, you're putting money. I'm going back there in a moment. Hallelujah. But let's get this. Look, what, let me finish it right here. Look what it says, brothers and sisters. Stay with me here. We're in Proverbs chapter 3. He's saying, if you don't forget his Torah and let it, you know, in your heart, say, length of days and life and peace shall be what you've known for. Hallelujah. But verse 4, it says this. So you shall find favor and good understanding before Yahuwah and before men. Verse 5, it says here, trust in Yahuwah with all of your heart. Sounds like the same thing that uh, we were told by Moses. Love Yahuwah with all your heart, all your mind, and all of your strength. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4, and 5. Yahuwah is alone, one. And then five is trusting with all your heart, all your might, and all your strength, correct? Now, how is this wrong teaching when I'm giving it right to the, from the book? Making it easy. You know, okay, let's go a little bit farther. Well, no, I'm going to go farther. But Solomon said in, in, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22, what did he say? How long would a simple love simplicity? He said, how long would a scornful delight in scorning? These are those who want to be mockers, who want to tell us, oh, y'all Torah only, y'all Yahuwah only, y'all this, y'all that. Torah done away with. You don't have to keep the Shabbat. He said, they're going to be there. He said, they're going to delight in being scoffers. And then he said, what? The fools. He said, how long would a fool hate knowledge? How long would a fool hate knowledge? Now, you ought to think about that. What does that actually mean? How do I hate knowledge? Well, one way to prove that you hate it, you don't seek it. Secondly, you, you're, you're closed-minded. That's another one that hates knowledge. Another one is you set in your ways. I was born a Christian and I'm a die Christian. Foolishness. Fool hates knowledge. White ice is colder than black ice. Although it's ice. They got it from the same place. You know, uh, Yah has created this channel. He's created the second channel, DFG, uh, King Coming Soon, Israel channel, to teach, inform, and educate. But many in Israel... <laughs> Not only will you not show up, but if you do show up, you won't follow even basic instructions. Just basic stuff. The basic teachings. So you get your, 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 your pen and your highlight, you don't get the pen and highlight, you just sit there and listen like a zombie. Bugged out on, like, like, a, like a dope head marijuana smoker. You're sitting there, ooh, boy, this sounds good. <laughs> Isn't it good? <laughs> That's most of Israel when the word comes. They like to hear that word, but they damn sure not hungry for the truth. That's why they run to all these heathen channels. But Chaka Khan said, tell me something good. That's all they want. Tell me, baby. Tell me that you like it. Yeah, she's talking about sex. She's talking about debauchery. And that's Israel. Tell me somebody else going to die for the wickedness I do. Tell me I don't have to listen to him. I don't have to listen to nobody. After all, Jesus is my husband. He probably is. And I'm, I'm not even going to go down into that because I can go somewhere with that. But he said, you know, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I'll leave that alone for right now. 
But if your husband is anything other than the man that you are, you know, <laughs> married to, biblically married to, if it's anything other than that, you are a whore. And he's a whoremonger. And who would give us men down here to marry, women down here to marry, not angels. You don't remember when that came, when they, the fall of when these heathen, these angels fall and went into the daughters of men, just like Jesus' daddy did for him, according to them. Holy Spirit hooked up with another man's woman, got her pregnant, and told him don't tell nobody about it. Keep it quiet, Joes. And you think that's your... No kidding. Like you said before, fool hate knowledge. But let's go on here. But then again, the wise will understand. So let me remind you, the wise ones, those of you who are in, who are walking now in wisdom, in the light, that Yah welcomes you. He sent me to cry out, cry aloud. <laughs> Spare not, hallelujah, Isaiah 58. He sent me to tell you, wake you up. Hey, you. Get up. Time to go to work. Hey, you. Get up. It's time to get informed. Hey, you. Get up. It's time to prepare. Hey, you. Get up. It's almost time for us to go home. Hallelujah. Hey, you. Quit being wicked. Get running when nobody's chasing you. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Again, trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. Lean not, lean not, learn not until your own understanding because there's a way that seems right, you're going to get it wrong. Why are you telling us not to do that? Don't listen to no men, listen to the word. That's why I teach with the book open. Hallelujah. So you know it's Yah's word coming out of my mouth. And then verse 6, look what it says here. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. And you shall be wise in your own eyes. And in the fear of Yahuwah, he said, and be not, <laughs> be not wise in your own eyes. That's how you become conceited. That's how you become arrogant, hard-headed, stiff-necked. Because you just have to be right. And the question he confronts you with is why you have to be right. Why? Is your word greater than Yahuwah's word? That's why I said, why are your houses chiseled, but my house lies in waste? Say, why you want to be protected, but at the same time, you expect me to be neglected? He's saying, you want me to protect you, but you want to neglect me, Yasharel. It's not going to work like that. So you're going to be putting money, and bags, and holes in it. He said, everything that you do is going to end up nothing. Until you get it right, you just live amongst a wasteland. Building houses others will live in. Planting vineyards others will eat from. But again, look at verse 7, brothers and sisters. It says, don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear Yahuwah and depart from evil. So if he's telling us to depart from evil, that means we can. And if anybody's telling you that you're under the curses, they're telling you that you can. 
And to justify it, they're going to tell you, well, since you can't, we're going to give you a, another God and that God going to die for what you don't want to do. And that way you can keep on being evil. Or better yet, he's going to give you the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost still ain't going to work because you're still going to be doing evil. Where the Holy Ghost ain't nothing but a goddamn spook. Nothing but another demon. Probably a family of demons. Why they running around hollering, talking about they speaking in tongues and shaking and the quaking and the falling and the singing and the jumping and the stumping and the hoeing and the whole mongering. And much, much more. Every abomination you could think of is in them holding this churches now. Include that wicked ass man or woman standing behind that pulpit. Nothing but a damn bell priest. Teaching lies and hypocrisy. Please tell him I said that. He goes on here, but be not wise in your own eyes. Fear your who and depart from evil. Verse 8. It said, then it shall be held to your navel. The marrow of your bones. Your navel is just your lifeline. So your lifeline is like the navel, you know, like the umbilical cord from a mother to a, to a child. See, so that's the way we'll be connected to Yahuwah. He'll be our lifeline. But we got to stay away from wickedness. We got to keep his commandments. And they're not hard to do. There's some that we're not even expected to do because we're in captivity, not because we're under the curse. The curses are self-inflicted. The captivity is Yah's judgment for Yasharel. Two different things. I'm sent to remind you of that. If you want to break the curse, turn to Yahuwah. Because that's what he says right here. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah. Depart from evil. And it shall be held to your navel. Verse 8. Marrow to your bones. Honor Yahuwah with your substance. And with the first fruits. So put him first. Stop being selfish. Stop making up excuses for your selfishness. Stop having a pity party. And put your hands to the plow and start plowing. That means be re persistent. That means be resilient. That means study. That means meditate. That means pray. That means reflect. That means to walk it out. How you say it? That your actions represent your words. Be few, word, be few words, but much action. Let the word be in you, but don't stop there. Let the word that's in you change you and then demonstrate that change. And Yah said, I will bless your fruit when you do that. And you'll no longer suffer the curses because you're in obedience. The curses are for those who are in disobedience, willing disobedience. Says here, so your bones will be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. And he said, and if you get corrected, if you get some chastisement, he said, don't be mad about it. Why? Look at this. Here. My son, despise not the chastising of Yahuwah. Yahuwah, neither be weary of his correction. For whom Yahuwah loves, he corrects. But they're telling you, no, you don't need no correction. You just need Jesus, a Yahweh a, a Buddha. Just humming out. <laughs> Silliness. <laughs> it's child's play. Wickedness is what it really is. It's damnable doctrine and damnable behavior. And Yah said, because you playing with them demons, then I'm going to allow you to be utterly destroyed. You're going to put money in bag with holes in it. Well, Brother DFG, you just don't understand the Torah. Is the, Torah the Torah is done away with. Oh, I heard you. Let's come over here. Follow me over to Jubilees, chapter 6. And I'm going to say something to my brothers and sisters. 
You know, I don't know what you were doing last night, but I hope it was very, very important. I hope it was more important than being with like-minded brothers and sisters studying out this word. Now we can quit blaming Yahuwah for the, for the blessings you don't have. Or making them excuses that he don't want you to be blessed because you cursed. Even worse. Jubilee chapter 6 verse Look at this brothers and sisters Listen If you haven't thumbed this message up Go ahead and thumb it up 10 seconds Let's watch this If you feel like, we're, if you feel like your elder Is teaching, informing and educating Then that's the justification Not only for thumbing up But you should be subscribed to this channel You should be subscribed to the DFG uh, King coming soon Israel channel It's there And there's, there's content over there that's not the content that's over here. If you can try a little black ice, it's colder than white ice, I'd appreciate it. Because an Israelite man said that you did it. The Israelite man asked you to thumb it up. You 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 did it. You didn't do that, you just did it. Because you understood whatever he's doing, he cares about us. For better or for worse. I'm an elder doing what the elder is supposed to do. So let me do my part. And stand with him. But look what it says here. Now they tell us the Torah is done away with. Right brothers and sisters? Look, this is Jubilees chapter 6. Verse 14. For this Torah. Talking about Yahuwah's Torah. He said, for this Torah there is no limit of days. It is forever. And they shall observe it throughout their generation. That means forever and ever. So that they may continue supplicating. So that I, that they may be, Yah, continue supplicating on your behalf. With the blood before the altar every day. And at the end of the morning and evening, they shall seek forgiveness. And on your behalf, perpetually before you who are, that they may guard it and it be not rooted out. And he gave this same Torah to Noah as a sign that there shall not again be a flood on this earth. What he's simply saying that by obeying this Torah, it moves you away from wickedness and puts you in a righteous place. And since you're in captivity, no feast days or sacrifices are required. But obedience is. Yes, obedience is required. That's why Amos 5 and 21 said, yeah, I, said I, I hate your feast days. I hate all that stuff. Only thing I ask of you is justice and righteousness. But if you I don't want to do no, that's too easy. I want the whole week. I need to go give Walmart some money, go give Whole Foods some money and give me some lambs and go give me some unleavened, you know, flour. And I need to, that's, that's, that's Israel for you. Putting money in bags with holes in it. That's us. That's our people as a whole, not everybody. Y'all give you either way. You want to go the hard way. You want to acknowledge the curses, but you don't acknowledge the captivity. How interesting. When that captivity is nothing you can do about it, but the curses, you can do a whole lot about it. You can trust in Yahuwah and keep his commandments. Just as Solomon, the wisest man ever walked on this earth, said, just as hey is telling us, y'all said, how you going to focus on you and expect me to bless you and you're going to need like me? Make that make sense, Yahshua. That's what Yah is saying to us. They say it's done away. I show you it. Then they're going to say, what you believe is not. Okay. You, you got an excuse for everything. You scorners, you. But Yah told us to, 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 to mock you as a scorner. He said, you're going to delight in your scorning. Oh, and by the way, he said, you're going to, you're going to, because, you're, because you hate knowledge, you're going to be a fool. Thinking you right and wrong. Oh, and because you don't want to change, you're simple-minded. I been born a Baptist, I'm a dog Baptist. Too old to change now. Nah. Now you crazy bald head. They're gonna run you right out of the town. Like Bob Marley said, gonna chase those crazy bald heads out of the town. Oh, well, y'all say you're gonna go right to hell. 
brother, man. You too, old women who don't want to change. I was religious. I love Jesus. He died for my sins. Honey, now what time I got to be at the hospital tomorrow, you know, to go get my blood pressure medicine? Can you call my prescription? <laughs> Mm. All right. Let's go back on over here. <laughs> the hey guy. Let me let's let's try this again. I gave you a little backstory. Y'all say it's Taurus forever. And if we keep it, we'll be blessed because of it. Hallelujah. That's what he told us. He said it doesn't it's never done away with. And he said, even in your captivity. Again, I would I would absolutely Ask my brothers and sisters to take some time and read Leviticus chapter 26. If you had been with us last night, you would have been able to, to go to some lessons with us. And I like to thank some very insightful Yahweh's with us teaching me and opening up the hearts for others to grow and learn so that they can prosper and that they can be prepared for the things to come and prosper. The Yahweh's revealing. These curses are about rebellion. These curses are not about your hatred. Again, these curses are about rebellion. These curses are not about your hating Yahshua. Why would he hate? Again, Psalms 139 says what? We were fearfully, wonderfully made, marvelous to behold in the sight of Yahuwah. And just like Malachi 3 and 6 says, because he does not change, He's not going to destroy all of Yahshua. There will be a remnant, but that's going to be a righteous remnant. An enlightened remnant. A knowledge increased remnant. A dedicated remnant. A remnant who puts your whore first. They're interested in building his house. Not their own. Knowing that his cup overflow, so in serving Yahuwah, the blessing will flow on you. That's what Solomon was talking about with your increase. See, you know, if you put Yah first, he will make sure your bonds are stay full. You'll always have enough. And that brings me in mind to the to the widow, you know, uh, with the little oil and the little flour, and she was about to die, her and her son, and 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 Yahuwah told her, hey, I'm going to send a man to you, and when he comes to you, you give him whatever he asks you for. And he sent what? Elijah. And Elijah goes over there and says, hey, what you got in the pot? She said, I got just enough for me and my son, we're going to eat this and die. You know what Isaiah said? Uh, Elijah said, give, me, give, it, give it to me, give it here. Give me that, what you have in that pot. I know it's a little. But if you trust Yah, he'll make you a little a lot. And because she was obedient to Yah and to Yah's messenger, his prophet, when the rest of Israel was starving, you can read about it, First Kings, eating their own babies, just was what it was, eating donkey heads and bird dung, which is crap, poop, manure. Her, her son, and Elijah, they were doing just fine. Because she was obedient and she trusted in Yah. And Yah took that little she had and he blessed it. He multiplied it through her obedience. And her little became much. It became an overflow. And if Yah doesn't change, the same thing applies to us. But she was obedient, and that's why she was blessed. And Elijah was a servant of Yah, that's why he was blessed. He put Yah first as well. He wasn't walking on no damn water, talking to no, what he called about rain. But he wasn't doing no magic tricks. He wasn't being clever, subtle. Like their little wicked, you know, Yahweh shy. 
was known to do. He was a wizard, a warlock. And in China, a narrow master, praying the dead things. Oh, let's go over to the mount. I see Elijah and I see Moses. Dead men. Neuromancy. Paul. I heard a voice. Then I saw a vision. Neuromancy. Went out in the desert and got taught. Yeah, that's where the demons got put. In Dubai. And the rest of that story is what it is. But again, look, let's go back to Haggai, brothers and sisters. Verse 3, Haggai chapter 1, verse 3. Then the word of Yahuwah came to Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you to dwell in your chiseled houses? While my house lie in waste? Now, therefore, thus says Yahuwah, you need to consider your ways, Yasharel. And that's what he's telling us right now. You know, we're letting people lie to us and tell us that we're under some curses that we can do nothing about. And that's a flat out lie. And we all, in our deep in our heart, knows the lie because we see other Israelites doing well. We see others have nice, better jobs. They drive nice cars, expensive cars. Not, not that this is the valuation of a man, but if you want to talk about the curse of them, we're going to have to acknowledge that, that if they, everybody's on the curse, then how are they being blessed with those things? We know those things are things that we mentioned. They have money in the bank. They have a savings account. They have a checking account. Oh, and by the way, if they're asked to give, they don't sit there and argue with the, with, with the, with, with the messenger and say, oh, you are heathen because you asking for help. Are you asking for something? You know, they gladly dig in their pocket and give it. Even those who have little do it. Because they understand that a recip there is a, re uh, recess a, a reciprocity. Reciprocity. I only get that word out. Reciprocity. They know there's a reciprocity to giving. They know it. They know you sow, you are going to reap. Especially if you're sowing in the work of Yahuwah. They know that. That's not that's not some wizard tree, brothers. That's the truth. You just heard me read that in Proverbs chapter 3. Solomon just said it. He said, bring gift before Yah's and, and Yah will bless you. That's not he said. Your substance will increase. But we have become so hard-hearted and so rejected, so abused, that the very thing that can help us, we, we, we shun it. No, no, I ain't doing all of that. Then don't. But go ask somebody who does, and I bet you they're going to tell you a little something. Like, you know what? The elder is right. The word is true. But again, it's up to you. Consider your ways. Right? He said, consider your ways. Let me go it again. Uh, the, uh, again, Haggai chapter one, <laughs> verse five. Now, therefore, thus says now, therefore, thus says you are, consider your ways. In other words, you better take some time for reflection and ask yourself: Are you actually right, or you just think you're right? If you're learning and growing, can you? Give us a dissertation on how that is. And we ain't talking about a whole bunch of stuff, stuff, stuff. No, we're talking about in your walk, how you living. Not, not some book that's on your shelf. No, how you living. How your life changed. What are you doing different than you were doing before? That's what we're asking. How do you know that you know when you go before Yah? And you have to testify on your own behalf about your change. What is that going to sound like? And if you go before y'all, you know, doing a whole lot of talking and your behavior is not right, y'all are going to tell you, get out of here. Where's your fruit at? I ask you, where's your fruit? Where's your contrition? Your fruit is your contrition. What have you been doing? With the little bit you have. Or the much that you have. 
how is that how how is your life you know a reflection of your dedication to me these are questions that's going to come up brothers and sisters so I'm going to tell you out here now so you can leave before you go before y'all because you're going I'm going to but I'm going to tell you right now so at least you know what you're going to get at like it's like going on a job interview you go you hire you know maybe a, a, a specialist or a counselor or a coach and you say, hey, teach me how to do an interview. Teach me what to say when I'm interviewed. Teach, you know, you you hire a recruiter, try to get the best job. Okay, I'm here. I'm your, you know, your agent. And I'm telling you, what will help you if you're willing to listen. Because I'm telling you what Yahuwah says. He kind of gave us a head, a heads up. You know what the head up is? Like, I'm going to tell you in advance what's expected. And if you do these things, you're going to get the job. You get to do these things, you're going to be blessed. You do these things, you're not going to be cursed. Even though you are in the land of your captors. And even though they do despise you and hate you and are envious of you and are jealous of you and will do everything in their power to destroy you, just as Psalms 83 said they would do. Nobody's denying that. Certainly not myself. But Yah also said no weapon formed against us would prosper. So I question those who question Yah, which one is it? Are you under the curses or no weapon formed against you going to prosper? Just tell me which one so I can understand what you're trying to say. Because you cannot be between two opinions. Because if you are, you're just a fool. Blown away with, with you know, with every little thought, just like the wind. Just left to right, left to right, right to left, like a front. You can't have it both ways. Yah's not going to accept it both ways. So you you you're going to focus on on your on yourself and man, but you're going to neglect me and expect me to protect you or to bless you. Not going to happen. You need to consider what you're thinking. Is what he's saying again. Consider your ways. And that's to strengthen us. That's not to hurt us. Solomon again said, "Trust in Yah with all your heart. Lean not." To your own understandings and all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct means he will bless you. He will prosper you. Just like Jeremiah 29 and 11. We're going to go there in a moment. Hallelujah. But let's finish this right here. Say so you have so much, but you bring in little because you won't consider your ways. You eat, but you don't have enough because you won't consider your ways. You drink, but, you, but you're not filled with drink because you won't consider your ways. You're clothed, but you're still not cold, not warm. Or you're still naked because... Oh my goodness. Because you won't consider your way. You earn wages. Only to put those wages in bags with holes. Because you won't consider your ways. Verse 9 says, You look for much and, and it came to little. You brought it home and I and did I blow on it? No. And here's why. Says Yahuwah, because of my house that is a waste. In other words, you put me second and you run every man into his own house. You're thinking about yourself. You're selfish. Therefore, the heavens over you are going to stay, are gonna, it ain't going to give you no rain. The earth under you is not going to bear no fruit for you. He said, because why I call for this drought upon the land and upon the mountain and upon the grain and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground brings forth, upon men and upon cattle and upon, upon all the labor of the hands. Come on, let's read the rest of it. Then Ziba, Baal, the son of Shut, Yael, and Yahushua, the son of Yasada, the high priest, with the remnant of the people, the remnant of the people, the remnant, not all of them. See, this message don't apply to everybody. This message only applies to those who are seeking the truth. That's why we over here we teach, inform, and educate. This doesn't apply to everybody. Whether it applies to you or not, that's for you to decide. But if Yah is not first, it doesn't even apply to you, even though you hear my voice. If you just like to hear words, you just like to go to channel, you love channel surfacing. I'm li I listen to all these different people, then go for it. Go ahead. But the blessing part of that is not for you. Not the blessing part of this message. This is for those who are dedicated, those who are committed, those who are focused. 
but not for those who are, you know, turning every which away. Because you just want to hear the word. This is for those who are hungry for the truth. This is a truth channel. My name is not Dow. My name is not Jenny. My name is not Jake. My name is not Dollar. My name is not Hen. My, not, my name is not Osteen. My name is not Hagee. And I'm damn sure not no female lying prophetess who sleeps with devils with rags around their heads. Witches. But he gave, look at says here, but with the remnant of the people obey, but the remnant of the people obey the voice of Yahuwah in the words of Haggai the prophet. So they didn't let his melanated skin stop them from listening to him. So it's okay to listen to a melanated prophet of Yahuwah. Black ice is cold, just like white ice is cold. As a matter of fact, I think I like my own ice better. Because that's what the heathen going to tell you about their ice, Israel. So how about liking your ice? How about standing with your ice giver? Your ice maker? Who's getting this ice from Yahuwah? And it's way better than white ice. White ice full of lice. It's like they are most of them. Let's come in over here. He says, look. In the words of Yahuwah, hey God, a prophet, as Yahuwah has sent him, the prophet did fear. The people did fear. Hallelujah. The people did fear before Yahuwah. Then spoke Haggai Yahuwah's messenger and Yahuwah's message unto the people saying, I am with you, says Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Zebrabiel, the son of Shejel, the governor of Judah. And the Rahuk of Yahashua, the son of Yachuda, the high priest, and the Ruach of all the remnant of the people. And they came and they did the work in the house of Yahuwah, their Elohim. Hallelujah. See, they heard the truth. And they didn't get caught up in rebellion. They didn't get caught up in the past. They didn't get caught up in the hurt. They didn't get caught up in, in pain. They didn't get caught up in, in, in doom and despair. No, they said, no, let me act and be aware. Let me put my trust in Yahuwah. Let me un understand that he gave us prophets, servants to serve us, to help us. Connect the dots in regards to what he's saying to us. Hallelujah. The watchmen, they watch over the sheep of Yasharel on behalf of Yahuwah. The righteous ones. The wicked ones, they try to build their own house. Again, those are the jakes, the snakes, the dolls. Building a 13,000 foot mansion where he got people living on his property using outhouses. And they give him all his resources. Talking about putting money in bags with holes in it. Goodness. He's living like a king and they're living like slaves. And they don't even know it. Pastor deserves it. It's always a justification for liars, thieves and crooks, witches. But again, as, as Haggai said, let's go read this to you again. Haggai 1.14. And Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of the people. Are the remnant of all the people, the remnant, the elect, the remnant. And they came and they did the work. They obeyed Yahuwah's law, statutes, and commandments. And guess what? They were blessed. But can I double down on this blessing? <laughs> One more time. And while I'm doing that, I want to thank Brother Patterson, Brother Keith, Brother Mendez, Brother Yancey, uh, Sister Mosley, and Sister Thornton <laughs> for putting seed in good soil over here. Hallelujah. And all the rest of you have done it and those of you who plan to do it. Hallelujah. Thought I'd sneak that in. 
Hallelujah. Because they, you know, I guess in the game of life, the 50 yard seats don't interest them. No, they say, no, brother, we here with you. We'll do our part so you can keep doing your part. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, let's go to verse 8. Because this is very important. Matter of fact, verse 7. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captives and pray to Yahuwah for it. For in peace thereof shall have, they shall have peace. This is the power we have even in captivity. But they want to tell us we're a bunch of losers. You're under the curse. You can't do nothing. Liars. Verse 8. But thus says Yahuwah, the Elohim of Yasharel, let not your prophets and your diviners, divinations, these are your priests, your pastors, your clergy, your, your apostles, you know what I'm saying, all of that group, your bishops. I said pastors, evangelists, prophetess, these are all of them. He said, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. In other words, you're making this up for yourself. You're allowing yourself to you believe in your own lies is what he's saying. Cognitive dissonance. Convenient lies for uncomfortable truth. Don't believe the hype. Isn't that what public enemy said? Uh, public enemy said? Elvis was a hero to me. Was a hero. No, Elvis was a hero to you. Or something like that. I can't get the verse right, so I'll leave it alone. Elvis was a hero to most, but he didn't much mean much to me. Straight out racist. Simple and plain. <laughs> MF him and John Wayne. <laughs> That's what. <weird. laughs> but you need to be telling them damn wicked ass preachers. Get out of my face. Get the funk out of my face. He said it because they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. He said, I haven't sent them, says Yahuwah. And that's for all you people in all these places where these divinators are. All you followers of the carry and the and, and the Debor, in uh, what is that? Uh, redirecting uh, Debor, Watchmen, them devils too. Anybody that's teaching you about sorcery means anybody who believes that Jesus is the Redeemer, Messiah, a Savior for Yahshua are nothing but witches and warlocks. They are false prophets and prophecies. The Carrians, the, the, the Celestial, all of them. And if you're doing it, you're a false prophet too. And just like them, you're going to burn in hell with your gods. If you don't repent. He said, they prophesied falsely unto you in my name. He said, I haven't sent them, says Yahuwah. And I know why he said it. He said, why would they be telling you that you have another Savior or you have another Redeemer when I said I am the only one? I alone. Come on. <laughs> I, I have to do it, praise Yahuwah, because I refuse to sit here and let these liars get away with it. Look at this. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 and 24. Look what Yah says. Sirach. Sirach 24 and 24. Ecclesiastes. It's, he said, faint not to be strong in Yahuwah. In other words, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't accept curses. That you may, that he may, Yahuwah may confirm you and that he may cleave to you like that navel we talked about, that Solomon talked about, that lifeline. For Yahuwah is Elohim alone and besides him there is no other Savior. So tell me again why you listening to them. Tell me again why they're not false prophets and false teachers, false prophetess, false evangelists. Tell me why. Because according to this, they should only be talking about your who is your savior. Your who is your redeemer. That alone makes them false or liars. Male, female does not matter. Young, old does not matter. Religion doesn't matter. He said again, your whore 
alone and besides him there is no other. So let's come back over, back to Jeremiah 29 and 9. He said, he prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says Yahuwah. Now y'all, brothers and sisters, y'all can do with that what you want. And this is not the pocket. Jeremiah is not in the pocket of a book. Nor is Haggai. Nor is Leviticus. Verse 10 says, Thus says Yahuwah, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babel, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says Yahuwah, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hear your prayers. You will seek me and find me and then you shall search for me with, when you search for me with all your hearts and I will be found of you, says Yahuwah. And I will return away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I have driven you, says Yahuwah. And I will bring you again to the place whence I caused you before I caused you to be carried away into captivity. Hallelujah. That good enough for you? Hope I steered it up a little bit. Praise you, Hua. Well, that's all I have for you. At least for today. The signs of the time everywhere, brothers and sisters. The clock is ticking. Tomorrow is not promised to anybody, including you. Don't leave this world thinking you have some other savior, you have some other redeemer that the Torah is done away with, that, that you can dishonor Yah's word because the heathen says so, or they, they're clever enough in the scripture to confuse you because they know you're not learned because you won't come to where the teachings are. Fools hate knowledge. The simple love to be simple. Just tell me what I want to hear. I don't I ain't I really want the truth. I just want to just be okay. Well, okay is not good enough. You dedicate it all the way in, or you're going to lose. Simple as that. In the end. Hallelujah. That's all I have for you. Again, I want to thank my brothers and sisters, you know, those of you, you know, who are stumbling up and commenting in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, you know, in the channel. Oh, Sister Maria, I, I talked about those who are blessed. I forgot our dear Sister Maria. Thank you, too, for being a blessing. And so, again, but... At the end of the day, I want to thank all of you who are here and who are loving Yahuwah. Righteous stranger, you too. But remember, what applies to Yahshua applies to you as well. You can't just be a hear of the word and not a do of the word either. You need to invest where you expect to reap. Hallelujah. And if you do that, Yah will bless you. With that to be said, May Yahuwah bless you. May he keep you. May he watch over. May he guide you as you come and go. Hallelujah. And may he bring you the ultimate peace. And that is the assurance when you leave here. <laughs> what a glorious day it's going to be for you. Thumb up the message. Share the message. Elder Watchman. DSG. Shalom.